Hello there. Hi. Boy, you don't see many of these around here. <laughs> you won't see many anywhere. You couldn't possibly give me a lift to the nearest village, could you? I need to rustle up a tow truck. I could probably call you one out, save you the trip. Oh, wonderful. Delta Alpha 26 to control. Come in, Mac. There's a broken down vehicle on the Upper Moreland Road. About a half a mile from the crossroads. Could you uh, call the garage and get a tow truck sent out? Driver with vehicle? Yes, and you're hardly going to miss it. It's a Bentley. Out. I must say, I didn't expect to be rescued by the local constabulary. Tim Barnett. Oh, don't worry. DC Mike Bradley, nice to meet you. Look, I've got to go, but uh, don't worry. The uh, garage isn't very far, so they won't be long. Thanks very much. Hole straight through the head. That's pretty neat shooting. Yeah, some folk will shoot out that moves. They're not the ones have to bear the cost, though. Morning. Sarge said there was something you wanted me to take a look at. Yeah, just some really so and so taking a pot shot at my sheep. I'd say more like target practice. And with a high powered rifle. You. You're driving me crazy. What did I do? It's not just any Bentley, it's a 1936 Bentley Malinus Sports Saloon. Once the proud property of a duchess. So, uh, well, you, you're the chauffeur then? <laughs> oh, no, no. I bought this wonderful vehicle in terrible condition. Someone who had no idea what was in his barn. It's taken me nearly two years to restore her. This is my first real outing. I might have known something would go wrong. I hope you know what. I'm not over familiar with these old Bentleys. Yeah, I have a fair idea. But I'll need to order some parts. Oh, well, we can certainly do that for you. Come with me. Target practice? Something like that. All five animals were shot in the head. Steve recovered one of the bullets. Very zealous of you, Crane. I'd say it definitely came from a high-powered rifle. In that case, you, Ventress and Bellamy can have a troll through the list of firearm certificates. Anyone with a rifle registered to them, I want you to pay them a visit. Sheep may be two a penny around here, but I won't have them used as target practice. Do you think that's going to take all three of us, Sarge? Well, I beg your pardon, Crane. Do you have a more pressing engagement? No, Sarge. Well, I can take this to ballistics if you want, Sarge. Don't tell me you're short of work to do as well. Well, look, it's all very well being promoted to CID, but when are they going to give me a proper job? Well, bureaucratic wheels take time to turn. You have to be patient. And in the meantime, all I'm doing is uh, investigating dead sheep. Bentley Sports Saloon. Then you must be either a toff or a villain. <laughs> Which is it? Who's he? Take no notice of her. Yeah, all mad. That's the other possibility. Oh, it took him six months just to rebuild the chassis. See, I'm a sad case. And um, since it's going to take me a couple of days to repair her, I was wondering if you could um, fix me up with a room. Yeah, certainly. Well, uh... You can give my chassis a once over any time. Shh. <laughs> I was just passing in. I wondered if you fancied dinner tonight. Um, would that be chippy, Chinese, or knife fork and napkin? <laughs> I'm looking for Dr. Merrick. Um, do you have an appointment, sir? Perhaps you'd inform her that James Robson is here. I'm a former colleague from St. Thomas's. I'll um, see if she's free. St. Thomas's. London, isn't it? Yes, indeed. <laughs> You'd better come in. Charming, if a little rustic for my taste. 
It's very quiet around here. Don't you miss the hustle and bustle? What are you doing here? I need to talk to you. I phoned, but you never returned my calls. So in the end, I was obliged to come here in person. I've got surgery about to start. Then I'll wait. Well, getting the engine reboard was a bit of a problem, but then this friend of mine recommended this chap down in Surrey. Whenever I talk about cars in here, I get told to shut up. Yeah, well, you're not exactly sex on a butty, are you, Bern? No offence. None taken, I'm sure. <laughs> well, you made it then. Ah! Gina, would you get um, DC Bradley a drink? And his friend, too. Oh, that's very kind, but uh, he'll have an orange juice. Do you know, I'd still be stuck on the moors if it weren't for you. And then, I'd never have discovered this place and its gorgeous landlady. <laughs> He's got a silver tongue, this one. <laughs> so how's the Bentley? Oh, it should only take me a couple of days to fix it up, once I get the parts. But well, I'm more of a bike man myself. Oh, yeah, what'd you ride? Triumph Bonneville. Oh, oh excellent machine. I'm sure you can fix one of those, too. You should pin your ears back, Phil. <laughs> you might learn something. Where to, bin lady? To the shops, Parker. I need a new fur coat. Very well, bin lady. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I was just... Uh, Don't worry, David, it's all right. I'll tell you what, when she's fixed, you can take her out for a real spin. Let me guess. Coughs, colds and sneezes with the odd bit of sciatica thrown in. Can I make you some tea? I hope you don't mind. Of course not. Oh, Lizzie, you're not cut out to be a country GP. Oh, and being a consultant's mistress, the, the boss of every cheap joke and innuendo. That's the path to professional satisfaction, is it? I've missed you so much, you know. We agreed this was for the best. Answer me one question. Are you truly happy? No. And neither am I. Not having you around has really made me take stock of my life. OK, so uh, professionally, I have been very fortunate. But without the woman I love by my side, what's the point in it all? I'm not a man given to flowery statements, you know that, but... Well, I can't do without you, Liz. It's as simple as that. I just want you back. What have you told Helen? Well, nothing as yet. I will tell her I'm leaving, I promise you. But I have to consider the children. The timing has to be right. If you'll just come back to London, we can sort this all out. You've had three years to sort it out. It's different now. Is it? Where does Helen think you are? Oh, there's a medical conference in York. I'm giving a paper tomorrow morning. How very convenient. Lizzie, I simply want you back. Yes, on your terms. I didn't come here with any expectations. I've even put a room in the local pub, if you don't believe me. That's just you being clever. I need you, Lizzie. And what about what I need? Well, what difference is one more night going to make? You were always pretty keen before, as far as I recall. What have you found yourself, eh? Some bucolic local to give you a quick roll in the hay? I see you're as selfish as ever. Now, if you will excuse me, us poor country GPs have a lot of paperwork. I was just about to lock up. With my help, you could have been a consultant in five years. You're a fool, Liz. I was, but I'm not anymore. <sighs> Fancy a drink? I'm meeting Dennis. But he won't mind waiting. I don't believe it. He was 
just with me. Uh, some brandy. It'll help. He came to visit you. I am. Uh, he. I worked for him at St. Thomas's. He was attending a conference in York. I don't understand any of this. He was just with me. How could he get shot? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. We've got men searching the area overlooking the pub now. It would help us if you could give us a few personal details about him, if you feel up to. We had a row. I chucked him out. How could such a terrible thing happen? We can talk later. <laughs> no, no, I won't. I'll get you some more brandy. His name is James Robson, consultant orthopaedic surgeon. I was his senior house officer at St. Thomas's. I was also his mistress for three years. That's why he was here. He wanted me to go back. We're going to have to contact his wife. But she knows nothing of the affair, and there's two children. Well, are you sure she knows nothing? He couldn't bring himself to tell her. That's why we split up and I came here. But could you think of anyone who would like to see him dead? <laughs> Good to see you again, Dennis. And you, sir. I thought you could set up the incident room in here. Went to the post-mortem first thing. Single shot to the head. I'm sure Bradley told you about the sheep. Yes. I've asked ballistics to compare the bullets. Bradley and another constable were only yards away when it happened. Could he have been aiming at them? It's possible. Except it was a very clean shot. Which suggests that Robson was the intended target. So who are we looking at? The wife? The ex-lover? Dr. Merrick has an alibi for the time of the shooting. With your girlfriend, I gather. Jenny works for Dr. Merrick. As for Mrs. Robson's alibi, I spoke to her in London shortly after the incident. She's arriving by the afternoon train. She sounded totally devastated to me. Uh, milk and two sugars, if I remember rightly, sir. Nice. Good timing, veteran. I was in the pub, as you know. David! Where were you when this chap got shot? Oh, I don't know. Did you hear a shot? Yeah, we both heard it. What were we doing here? We were, we were here, just sort of looking her over, having a chat. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. To be quite frank, I don't think either of us realised what it was at the time. It sounded more like a car backfiring to me. Yeah, it was a bit like a, a car. Right. Well, thanks. You fancy a jar later on? Well, by the time I've questioned the rest of the village, I think I've kind of need more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Robson, PC Ventures. You're the one I spoke to? That was my sergeant. I don't really understand how it happened. Was my husband in an accident? Let's get you to the station. And they'll explain it all to you. Bradley? Oh, you better have a look at this, sir. There's been scorching over there where the, uh, the muzzle flash went through. You've got sharp eyes, Bradley. And the bracken's been flattened, so I reckon he puts a coat down or something to lay on, sets up his rifle, and then waits for his target. If he made a shot from this range, and at night, he's quite a marksman. Oh, it's just lucky he didn't hit Phil or me. Shot? You mean with a gun? How? Was it an accident? We don't think so. <laughs> I understand you know Dr. Merrick. She's here. She could... Liz. Yes. Yes. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Robson. But I don't understand any of it. Well, how can he be dead? Why? I don't know. What do I say to the children? Don't worry about that now. What am I going to do? Let me give you a sedative. <laughs> I need to find somewhere to stay. We can put you up in a local hotel or... I, I've got a spare room. You can stay with me. Oh, oh, thank you, Liz. Thank you. We can talk later. 
I'm afraid there will be some formalities. Well, what do you make of that? Do you think she knew about the affair? It certainly doesn't look like it. So where does that leave us? Looking for a needle in a haystack. There you go. So is it really true about him being Dr Merrick's lover? He was a former colleague, that's all I know. Oh, come on, Jen. What well, else then? Oh, have you caught anyone yet? Oh, give us a chance. <sighs> yeah, just spent a half of the afternoon watching forensics, picking bullets out of sheep's brains. Uh, I don't think we really want to know that, Phil. Oh, uh, we're here to uh, collect all the stuff from Robinson's room. Oh, that won't be too hard. He never even unpacked his bag. Well, I'd never have imagined such goings on in a sleepy little village like this. Oh, we're not that sleepy. Should stick around a while. Maybe I will. Yeah, do us all a favour. Sorry, I didn't mean to give offence. Yeah, not much. Are you and Gina? Oh, look, I'm sorry, I didn't realise. Uh, that's because there's nothing to realise. Some people are just extremely childish. What about the conference? Someone should call him. I've already done it. He said he'd pop in and see you if he had the time. I wish he hadn't. You were important to him, Liz. He was very well regarded. You thought you were wasted as a country GP. I was never cut out for the politics of a big London teaching hospital. I know how much you meant to him. I'll go and make some hot milk. That might help you sleep. Any luck? Not so far. Station's practically taken over by CID. Poor thing. Why don't you come back to mine and I'll cook you some supper? Best offer I've had all day. Oh, thanks, Gina. Come on, Phil. You better go. Come on. I'm sorry. Just go home. No, we we'll get like an old one, like that, Mr. Barnett. What are you going on about? What happened? I could get one of those, like, chauffeur's uniforms with the, the peak cap and everything. We could, we could hire it out for weddings and all sorts. You know, you're showing worrying signs of turning into another Vernon. Am I? Oh, she sees in it. Just because he's got a flash car. Well, I thought it was over between you two ages ago. Yeah, well... Hey, look, uh, see you tomorrow, mate. came from somewhere over there. We've got to go take a look. Be very careful, Mike. Don't give them another target. And wait for backup. Can you believe it? The guy has the nerve to come back to the same place the next night. Mike. Spent cartridge? Yep. It's a 7.62 NATO. I'd say this came from a British Army sniper rifle. Thanks. You're lucky it was superficial. The bullet must just have grazed him. Oh, Phil, come here. Hey, I'm all right. Really, I'm all right. Looks very much like there's a nutter on the loose and he fancies his chances at shooting police officers. In fact, his first victim may have been a mistake. The questions we have to ask are, is he a stranger, in which case, why Aidensfield, or is he local? He's certainly a skilled marksman, probably been in the army, and likely to have a grudge against the police. So, roadblocks, door-to-door -door inquiries, I want no stone left unturned. Sergeant, I want your lads to concentrate on local families with military connections. We've already been checking that, sir. There are about a dozen. So find me someone amongst them with a chip on his shoulder and who can shoot.
Morning, Nathaniel. Can we have a word? Aye. If you must. What's young Frank doing these days? Is he still in the army? Some unpronounceable name in Germany. Is that him? Aye. What's the trophy for? Marksmanship. He was top of his class. Does he uh, get much leave, Nathaniel? Don't bother to visit me if he does. Don't you even want to know why we're interested? Not particularly. You coppers come nosing round. Usually means trouble. And is that what Frank feels too? He doesn't like the police. I nicked Frank Claycorn a couple of times when he was a kid. He was a tearaway, right enough, but mainly petty stuff. Well, still, could have been enough to give him a grudge against the police. The army was the making of the lad. I've seen him since. Come on. There's no way he'd have turned into the nutter that we're looking for. You quite sure about that, Alf? This lad's in catering. He hardly gets to pick up a rifle, according to his dad. The Jackson boy's in Hong Kong. Uh, have you uh, told him about Frank Cleghorn? I was just getting to him. I've just been on the phone to the Ministry of Defence. Frank Cleghorn was dishonourably discharged from the army two months ago. Where's Frank, Mr Cleghorn? You lot, you never give up, do you? You never leave anyone in peace. It'll be easier if you just tell us. Oh, I. Who for? Come on, Mr. Cleghorn, we've got a warrant to search. Well, just don't let out me pigs. Otherwise, there'll be you lot chasing them. All right. Lads, we know Frank left the army two months ago. Where is he? How should I know? He went to London. He's not been here. Sir, over here. A Harley Davidson. That's a very nice bike, Mr. Cleghorn. I really don't think it's quite your style, is it? Just tell the children I'll be back as soon as I can. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Can I make you some toast? Oh, I'm really not that hungry. I don't think I slept a wink. It will get easier. I don't see how. I'm no good on my own. I always seem to end up in such a mess. James always... Oh, come on, Helen, you just have to get through this. How? All the financial things, paying bills, James did all that. What about your family? Surely they can help you. Oh, my sister's got three children of her own. My brother's always away. James will have appointed an executor. Do you, do you have any idea who that might be? No. Oh, it's all so awful. I don't even begin to see how I'll manage. People do. They have to. Now, you've got a nanny. You've got money. I'm sure he had plenty of life insurance. You think he'd have been far happier with you, don't you? What do you mean? A man like him, he needed to have affairs. I understood that. I was very glad when it was someone like you. I suppose some women are more suited to being wives and others who go in for careers, like you, are better as mistresses. I didn't realise you knew. Jamie and I had few secrets. Oh, don't look so worried, Liz. I'm really not upset about it. I always wanted us to be friends. I have to go. I have a number of house calls. See you later, then. I'll try to stop being quite so pathetic. Oh, that's great, Dave. Thank you. Gina said these are over for you. She must really fancy you. She knows I'm Susie. I've only got eyes for you. Oh, I've met your type before, not to be trusted. Well, it's empty over there, is it? Oh, regulars, yeah, but it's full of coppers. That till aunt stop ringing. What are they doing? Search me. Waiting for the next person to get shot, I suppose. I missed the last one. I was down in the cellar changing the barrel. Hey, it's dead exciting, though, isn't it? The Agents Field sniper. Fella rung up from the newspaper this morning. He uh, wants to take a picture of me and Dina. <laughs> Gonna be famous. You want to be careful you don't get shot. I wouldn't mind a name, miss. At least everyone makes the right fuss of you. Eat up, 
and bring back the plague. She's a nice girl. You should ask her out, David. Not me! <laughs> Oh, no. You're not helping that lad of yours, you know. I'll be the judge of that. For what it's worth, I don't think he's capable of that. You a gaffer does, though. You've got to look at that old picture, Nathaniel. Your lad was booted out of the army but two months ago. It was the worst day's work he ever did. I told him that. Well, we're going to find him. And the longer it takes, the worse it's going to look. Smuggling muddy cigarettes, that's what they discharged him for. But you don't go from smuggling cigarettes to shooting folk. I know that. Kids, eh? He's got another little scheme just at the minute. You'd best tell me about that. The Ashfordly estate? Uh, he's out there poaching his lordship's deer. He's got some deal with a posh retail outlet down south. He supplies them with prime venison. Uh, just a few carcasses a month so they don't get noticed. You mean? Come on, Parker. Let's take it for a spin. Mr. Reed, this is Detective Inspector Shiner. I understand Lord Ashworthy's away. The Lordship's instructed me to uh, cooperate fully. Oh, it's pretty simple, really. There's a man after your deer, and we're after the man. There's a poacher for a while. On a state this size, loss of a few days out of control. We're almost on the herd now, just through this clearing. If he's here, we'll have him. Sir, over here! There he is! <laughs> Go easy, pal. Are you Frank Cleghorn? Are you Guy the Gorilla? Come here, Chris. Come here. Edensfield. I haven't been near there in a week or more. Oh, where have you been? Look, what is this about? Okay, so I poached a few deer, but why the heavy brigade? This is a murder inquiry. You've got the wrong man, pal. But you haven't even heard there's been two shootings? No. One man has been shot dead and a police officer injured. Well, it wasn't me. Well, whoever it was was a pretty skilled marksman. So? Just because army told me to shoot doesn't make me a killer. The army also chucked you out, didn't it, Frank? Dishonourable discharge, that must have rankled. You're not too keen on me and my colleagues either, are you? I don't believe this. I want a solicitor. Good day's work, lads. Drinks are on me. Uh, sir. Don't you think his reaction was a bit odd? In no what way? Well, his comment when we nicked him and just now, he, he genuinely believed we brought him in for poaching. Mike, this is not an ordinary crime. He's not an ordinary criminal. He's a military man. He wouldn't have embarked on something like this without making sure he laid down a very clear cover for himself. So, his cover is Poacher. Probably believes it himself. Well, yeah, I know, but it just doesn't feel... Of course, he's going to swear blind. He doesn't know what we're talking about. I'd be surprised if he didn't. But once we get the ballistics report, you'll see him change his tune. Here you go, sir. Uh... Alf, do you still think they're barking up the wrong tree? Well, the only thing that interested Frank Cleghorn when I knew him was making a few quid on the sly. He was a bad lad, but going round shooting coppers. Still, what do I know? I'm not CID. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're doing all right, Phil. 
Hey! Hey, you got him. Well done, mate. But we're uh, still waiting for the ballistics report. Do you ever think much about life? How many pints have you had? See, the question that keeps coming back to me is, why was I spared? Eh? Maybe it's a sign. A sign? Yeah, you know, the, I should be doing something more important with my life. The question is, what? See, he'd a pop at me twice and I was inches away from death, but something saved me. <sighs> Makes me feel religious, doesn't it? But we can't be sure he was aiming at you the first time. No, Shiner says he's got a grudge against coppers and it was me who was wearing the uniform, mate. Not you. OK, look, if he was shooting at you, how did he manage to kill Robson so cleanly? I mean, you were only yards apart. That, Phil, it, it just doesn't make sense. He could have just missed. Yes. But what if Robson always was his target? Yeah, uh, but then why have another pop at me, eh? Because that's his cover. He wanted to kill Robson, but he only ever intended to wound you. To make it look like there was some sniper on the loose to put us off his tracks. <laughs> Who'd want to kill some posh doctor? I don't know. I'm going to find out. Well, I still think it's a sign. There you go, Phil, from yet another well-wisher. You should get shot more often. Gina, I've been doing some thinking. We None of us know how long we've got, do we? It's probably just as well. Well, if I die tomorrow, the thing I'd regret the most is me and you breaking up. That's just the ale talking, Phil. No, no, it's not. I just wish you'd think about it. To be quite honest, Mike, I was relieved when she insisted on going out. Well, things haven't been easy, then. It turns out she's known about James and me all along. And she? But she's OK with it. Apparently, I was a contributory factor in keeping their marriage going. It's a bit galling, I can tell you. You know, Liz, in most murder cases, the first person the police suspect is the spouse, and most of the time it turns out to be right. But how could Helen shoot him? She was in London. Well, how isn't the issue? But if she knew of the affair and was angry and jealous and thought he was going to leave, well, that's certainly a reason why. She just isn't the type. Murdering her own husband. Or having him murdered. All right, Liz, I'm going to talk to D.I. Shiner about this again tomorrow morning. Thanks, Mike. Hello. Gosh, I must have walked miles. I'm lucky that uh, nice chap stopped and gave me a lift and uh, get out of these shoes and into a nice hot bath. That's OK, Liz. Of course. Mr. Bradley. Hello, David. Tell me, did you ever get to drive the Bentley? Oh, yeah. It was, it was great. You know, but, oh, Mr. Barnett, he's ever such a lovely bloke. Yes, everyone seems to like him. Now, the thing is, David, I need to ask you about the night of the shooting again, and I need you to think very carefully about what you really remember. Oh, well, uh, oh, I were here with uh, Mr. Barnett when it happened. Well, how do you know that? Well, we had the gun. Can you actually remember hearing a shot? Think, think carefully. Well, I mean, not, not exactly, but, well, I mean, Mr Barnett did. But you didn't. I, I can't remember. David, how long were you and Mr Barnett here together that night? Well, uh, not long. I, mean, I wanted to get home for me tea. Well, he's only come to get some tools. Hey, do you know, he's got a secret compartment under the back seat of his car. You get loads of stuff in there. <laughs> Excuse me. It's an imaginative theory, I grant you that. But what have you got to connect Mrs. Robson and Tim Barnett? Well, I saw her getting out of his car. She said she'd been for a walk and that he'd offered her a lift. You say she knew about the affair. She told Dr. Merrick she didn't mind. Well, maybe she didn't mind. Is there any evidence that he was really going to leave her? Well, no, Randley. A lot of CID work is about judging character. And I still reckon that Frank Cleghorn is our man. He get a nose for these things. And Helen Robson doesn't strike me as a sort of woman who could plot a murder. Well, maybe not. Well, I think you're a keen lad. I appreciate that. But you must learn not to get obsessed with an idea, however clever it is. 
Well? Well, he listened, but he reckons it's rubbish. He's sold on Claycorn, isn't he? Yep. He's got no real evidence yet. He's just following the hunch himself. Well, that's my point. We should be looking for alternatives. If you're going to succeed as a CID officer, you've got to back your own hunches. What you really need is hard evidence. Yeah, I hope you're not trying to nip my car, officer. <laughs> no, no, I was just, uh, just admiring her. Is she um, all fixed up? She certainly is. And sadly, that means I'm off. Well, um, I was just wondering if I could pick your brain before you leave. Listen, I've told you before. I like bikes, but my mechanical advice on them is not to be trusted. No, my question's all about women. Uh, well, one woman in particular, Mrs. Robson. Oh, you mean that um, poor lady I gave a lift to? Yeah, do you think she might have murdered her husband? Well, I really couldn't say. Well, no, it's just that um, my boss has this well, crazy theory. Well, he thinks it could have been her and, uh, well, an accomplice. I thought you had your sniper under lock and key. Well, we did. But uh, we released him this morning. But isn't that a bit risky? Well, I think so. You see, I was the one who nicked him, and I can tell you, well, well he's a bit of a nutcase. What if he kills again? Well, exactly, that's my point. I, I just hope that Frank Cleghorn doesn't go out and shoot somebody else, and I'll be proved right. Well, listen, mate. Um, all the best, eh? Yeah, well, safe journey. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Delta Alpha 26 to control. Come in, Mike. Barnard's leaving. I'm going to follow. Uh, Mike, Sarge would like to have a word with you before you go anywhere. Mike, I'm contacting Shiner. If you're right about this, you're in danger. I want no heroics, understand? You're leaving. I've got to get back to the children. Yes. Yes, of course. Helen, what's going on? The chap with the Bentley, you know him, don't you? Did he say something to offend you? Look, you've been very kind, and I don't want to impose on you any longer. I'll phone you about the funeral. Helen. He's my brother. Delta Alpha 26 to control. Come in, Mike. He's doubled back along Beck Farm Lane. He's up to something. Mike, the DI. Yeah, he wants to have a word. Bradley, we've just got ballistics on Frank Cleghorn's gun. It is not the murder weapon. I repeat, not. So your theory might have something to it. Now, trying to dig up all we can on this bloke, Barnett. Right, sir. We're getting some backup to you as quickly as possible. Until they reach you, exercise extreme caution. Understood, sir. It's hard not to be noticed up here, but uh, I'll stick with him. Out. I finally traced the owner of the Bentley. His name's not Barnett at all. It's Tim Connors. Lieutenant Tim Connors. He's a Royal Marine commando. This is the lane Mike was referring to. It's a bit of a way round by road, but over the fells you come straight down here and you're back overlooking Aidensfield. Then we must assume it's Aidensfield is headed for. Can we get enough armed back up in place before he gets there? Let's hope so. Delta Alpha 26 to control. Come in, Mike. He stopped on the ridge above Wade's Beck. Hang on. Looks like he's got a gun. He's on the move, on foot. He's heading west along Beck Hill. I'm going to see if I can follow. Out. I swear, Liz, I didn't even know he was here. You told him about James and me. James had been like a bear with a sore head for weeks. Then when he said he was coming up here, I thought he, he thought he really might leave you. Yes. 
And Tim tried to talk to him, remind him of his responsibilities. They had a blazing row, and I had to separate them. But I thought that was it. I didn't know Tim had followed him up here. I certainly didn't know what he intended to do. Oh, Liz, who's going to believe me, though? What if they send me to jail? Hello, Ash Philip. Hello? Hello, Liz? Is that, is that you? You all right? Her brother decided that if James were going to leave her, she simply would be better off if he were dead. She'd get everything plus the life insurance. Hmm. We think he's on his way back here. And he's got a rifle, but don't worry, Mrs. Robson. We've got arm back up on its way. What? You can't shoot him! <laughs> You're luckier than I thought, Bradley. Timothy Connors, I'm arresting you for the murder. It's not murder. Execution. He betrayed his wife and children. He had to be taken out for their sake, as simple as that. Right, let's get this place cleaned up. But you nicked him. At least Shannon could do was let you in on the interview. It doesn't like being proved wrong, if you ask me. Careful, Ventress. Morning, lads. Sir. Just wanted to let you know he's admitted it all. He seemed quite proud, in fact. No oh, love lost between him and his brother-in-law. I think he really believed he could get away with it. He might well have done, if it wasn't for Bradley. I'm well aware of that, Sergeant. I've had my eye on you throughout, Bradley. Once you get the bit between your teeth, you don't let go, do you? Well, that's no bad thing. Strikes me you've got the makings of a first-rate detective. Thank you, sir. Not a life that suits everyone, of course. But I had a word with the Chief Super this morning, and he agrees with me. There's a permanent CID job for you at Division, if you'd like it. Hi, Mike. Mike? Well? Well, I've signed on the dotted line. Gina? Did you know he was leaving? Leaving Aidensfield? Really? Yeah. Feels funny, though. Now the decision's actually made. I was hoping there'd be a few other people around. So I could say goodbye. Well, there's football on tonight, isn't there? Don't suppose there'll be that many in. Why don't you come through to the snog? Get you a drink in there. Be much cosier. Yeah. Come on. Changing of sunlight to moonlight Reflections of my life. Hey, and you didn't think we'd let you just slink off, did you? No, without buying us all a drink first. The first one's on the outs. Hey! 
Seriously, Mike, best of luck. I know you're good for me. We uh, still hope you'll give us a time of day when you become chief constable. <laughs> well, so long as you smart yourself up, huh? No chance of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Thanks, Dad. Well, I'm... I'm really gonna miss this place. And all of you. Yay. And go all girly on us. Well, we're always here if you fancy a visit. Thanks. I'll remember that. Well, everyone, to Mike Bradley, the London cop who thought he knew it all, came to Yorkshire and got a proper education. <laughs> everyone, to Mike. Mike. Mike.